Hey there folks, this is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have yet another fascinating integral. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of arc tangent of tangent square x over x squared dx. And I've actually sourced this integral from a really cool website called dailyintegral.com, which as the name implies, gives you integrals every day to solve, and those integrals are pretty damn cool. I highly recommend you check that website out. Whoever is maintaining that and managing that, absolutely brilliant stuff, brilliant job. Anyway, so the objective is to solve this integral, which by the way, was actually represented as an integral from negative infinity to infinity. But that of course makes sense because the integrand is an even function of x. So I'm just gonna solve in the integral from zero to infinity. You can double the result at the end to get the result of the actual integral from the website. Now, the problem here is that we have the arctangent function of tangent square x, which is not exactly very hospitable, is it? So we could try to get rid of it. And by getting rid of it, I mean we first define the integral function i of a parameter alpha as the integral from zero to infinity of arctangent of alpha times tangent square x over x squared dx. And you guessed it, we'll try to differentiate this thing because the derivative of arctangent is quite nice to work with. So we have i prime of alpha on the left, and on the right we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to alpha, on switching up the order of the derivative and integral operators of course, of arctangent of alpha times tangent square x over x squared dx. Now, because we're differentiating partially, that means we can just ignore the one over x term, one over x squared term for differentiating purposes. And differentiating the arctangent yields one plus alpha squared times tangent to the fourth power of x. And because of the chain rule, we do have this tangent square x term up top. Okay, cool. That actually looks like we've made things worse. But they do look cooler. I mean, this integral is a lot cooler or slightly cooler than the integral we started off with. And I'll take that as a good sign. And now we do have a tangent square up top. So we might as well expand that as sine square over cosine square so that we have sine square x over x squared. And I think you guys have figured out where this is going. Over cosine square of x times one plus alpha squared times tangent to the fourth power of x. And of course, now we have an opportunity to apply Lobachevsky's integral formula, which I have made a couple of videos about. I don't think I've formally proved this variation, the one with the sine square x over x squared term, but I should probably make a video on that. I will link a related video in the description box. Anyway, so if you have the following structure, that is the integral from zero to infinity, of sine square x over x squared times f of x dx, where, by the way, f of x is even, so f of x here equals f of negative x, and we have f of x plus or minus pi equal to f of x. In other words, f is pi periodic. In that case, the integral sorts out to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of simply f of x dx. And we notice that our function here, that is cosine square x, that is even, tangent to the fourth power of x, again even, so this thing is clearly even. And this is also pi periodic, because tangent itself is pi periodic. And although cosine of x plus pi would be negative cosine x, if I recall correctly, the square is still positive, so we're all good. This thing satisfies both criteria for I'll call this criteria A and criteria B. It satisfies both criteria A and criteria B for applying Lobachevsky's formula. So all of this implies that the derivative of i with respect to alpha is now just the integral from zero to pi over two of dx over cosine square x times one plus alpha squared times tangent to the fourth power of x. And that looks slightly better. I mean, it still looks quite hostile, if you ask me. But perhaps a transformation or two could do the trick. So what if we let 
tangent x equal u, which would imply that secant square x dx is equal to du, and of course secant square is just 1 over cosine square. So those are the ingredients for our differential element, and we have them. And as x approaches 0, terribly sorry about that, we have u approaching 0, and as x approaches pi over 2, we have u approaching infinity, of course. Okay, cool. Of course, x is supposed to approach pi over 2 from the left, which it is anyway. So this implies that i prime of alpha is now the integral from 0 to infinity of du over 1 plus alpha squared times u to the fourth power. And maybe I should have just clubbed this into one transformation, but it's cool. I could let root alpha times t uh, times u equal t, which implies that du here, terribly sorry about my cursive du, equals dt over root alpha. And that still does not alter the limits of integration. So we have 1 over root alpha, terribly sorry about that, times the integral from 0 to infinity of dt over 1 plus t to the fourth power, which again looks like quite an intimidating integral, but we know complex analysis. So we know about the beta function and a result connected to the beta function that I have derived a while back, that is the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 dx over 1 plus x to the k, if I recall correctly, this converges to pi over k times the cosecant of pi s over k. Now s here is clearly equal to 1, and k here is equal to 4, so that means i prime of alpha, terribly sorry about that, i prime of alpha is 1 over root alpha times uh, pi over 4 times the cosecant of, yet again, pi over 4. And cosecant of pi over 4 would be root 2, if I'm not wrong. So that means we have pi over 4 times root 2 over alpha. Okay, cool. So that's i prime completely in terms of the alpha parameter. And we should now recover back the integral function by integrating with respect to the alpha parameter so that we have the integral pi over 4 times the integral. Rather, wait, we also have pi root 2 over 4, which is 2 times 2. So this is just pi over 2 root 2 times the integral of alpha to the minus 1 half d alpha which of course is pretty elementary to evaluate. We have pi over 2 times root 2, alpha to the 1 half over 1 half, and this should cancel with the 1 half outside, resulting in a pi times root alpha over 2 plus a constant of integration c. And on the left, of course, we have i of alpha. And this constant is pretty easy to evaluate as well, since alpha equal to 0 implies that i of alpha is equal to 0, or I could just write this in one line, i of 0 is equal to 0, implies that 0 is equal to pi times 0 plus c. In other words, the constant of integration is indeed a big fat 0. Again, quite convenient. So this implies that i of alpha, my friends, is pi times root alpha over 2. We plug in alpha equal to 1. And this gives us the integral from... 0 to infinity of arc tangent of tangent square x, terribly sorry about that, over x squared equal to a very beautiful looking result there. That is pi times 1 over root 2 or pi over root 2. And of course, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of arc tangent of terribly sorry about that, tangent square x over x squared. Something's wrong with the exponents. And this whole thing equals 2 times that result, so 2 over root 2 is root 2, so pi times root 2 is the result of the other target integral. I hope you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, drop me a follow on Instagram as well, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you!